Hey, we've got a treat for you here. We haven't quite left just yet, but these, this carcass has all of a sudden elicited the attention of the scavengers, the cleanup crew, and it's made up of a collection of marabou stalks, white-backed vultures, rupels vultures, tawny eagles, and a batelier, a pair of juvenile bateliers. Sitting at the top of the tree, there's a juvenile bateliers. Coming in now, that bird that just landed there was a rupels vulture. The highest flying bird ever recorded, one was hit by a Boeing uh, at 30,000 feet up into the sky, which is a couple of thousand feet, three or four thousand feet higher than what Everest is. And that is a tawny eagle. I've got a little bit of a bone stuck in the crop there. Tawny eagles are profound scavengers. I think what's happened is it's swallowed a bit more than it can chew there. <laughs> it's not battling to get it down the throat. Now these vultures, oh and hooded vultures as well. So we've got the Rupels whiteback vulture and hooded vulture marabou stalk, which is that grotesque bird that you're looking at there. <laughs> the Rupels vultures are the, are the beautifully uh, brindled brown vultures and the white-backed vultures are the paler vultures that you can see. The one There's one on the left hand side, one in the foreground here. And they basically will pick this carcass clean and the vultures in this ecosystem eat more meat than what all the other predators here do combined and that is including lion and hyena. They do a fantastic job but unfortunately they are also being poisoned at a rate that is not sustainable and if we're not very careful about vultures and their, their and, and, and conserving them at least anyway we're going to have a problem in years to come in that disease will become a very real threat out here and things like lion and hyena uh, they will battle with trying to manage diseases. Carcasses cannot be left just to be rotting in the bush in any great numbers. And vultures in the world are in a massive decrease. Marabou stalks, however, they do very well around people. And you can see that that marabou is gulping down everything with that beautiful tawny eagle in the background with a golden color. One of the larger eagles out here. But for me, the prettiest of all of them are the Rupel's vultures. Not only because they are such massively high-flying birds, but I also love that brindled color that they have on their wings and on their chests as well. There where the tawny eagle is at the moment, you'll notice a red-headed bird, and that is the hooded vulture. Two of them there. I, did, I didn't do it um, as a, I suppose, a Twitter handle. I just asked that if a vulture dies, will other vultures scavenge off of it? That's a good, uh, that's a good question. Um, yes, I think that they would, to be honest. Um, I don't think vultures have a lot of meat on them. I've held a vulture before. I've held a leopard faced vulture before at a breeding center, and they're heavy birds, but they're not by any means, you can't, it's not like you can't support them on one arm with a little bit of a strut. They, they, they're fairly light birds. They, I mean, they've got an incredibly sharp beak. The edge of their beak, not the tip, the edge of their beak, uh, slides past the bottom jaw and creates a bevel there that's as sharp as any knife that you could get. They can slice off easily slice off chunks of meat with that beak and they've got a very strong bite and of course with that leverage that they've got on their neck they can they can twist around a lot so you don't want to be bitten by a uh, by a, uh, a vulture at all in fact but they're not big birds and although I suppose they'd be eaten by another scavenger why not um, I don't think they provide a lot of nutrition or a lot of meat. We've got a jackal coming in here now, another one of the mammalian scavengers. Right there, 
is being brought in probably by the squabbling of the of the vultures. They're very, very astute observers of vulture activity or jackal. And this jackal would be coming in directly to where he might or she might be able to get some food. Obviously, as it gets closer, I'm expecting this jackal just to stop a little bit and look to see if there's any lions around. Ears pricked forward. One of my favorite of all the predators. And the reason for that is that they're always busy doing something. That is my mark of mammalian interest. If they're busy doing something all day, then I, qu I quite enjoy them. Honey badgers, jackals, and hyena are my favorite because they're always doing something. You can see, stop there on the outskirts here. You smelt something there. And now very cautiously we'll come into this kill because there are still lions around. There's another male lion has looked up now. So he's over there, Debbie. Little vultures flying in. There's almost too much to look at over here. So there's that other male lion. He's now keeping an eye on this carcass. This jackal will now come in and there's a very good chance that the lion you know, stands up and chases the jackal and the vultures away. I don't know. It depends on how full the, the lion is, I think. Yeah, the jackal comes in, stop starting, stop starting, and will then dart in to try and get a morsel. Now, vultures in a group like this are intimidating enough. They'll, they'll, they'll easily uh, fend off this jackal, but this is, I gather, not the first time this jackal has been around a carcass, and I think knows how to deal with this. And even though these lions are so close, I think you will... Ah, and now, of course, I'm proved 100% wrong. <laughs> now, while this jackal decides to walk straight past the carcass and go and antagonize some lions, Danielle has asked, how are the vultures poisoned? Danielle, um, in areas like this where, where reserves are not fenced and predators can come out, quite often predators are blamed for stock theft. In an effort to kill the predator that is to blame for the stock theft, rather than hunting it with a bow and arrow, which is, which is what you have, or a spear, uh, farmers out here in desperation resort to poisoning carcasses. Now, they don't intentionally mean to kill the vultures in some cases. Um, it is literally just trying to, trying to, uh, to save their livestock and their livelihood. Um, but unfortunately, once the predator has taken a bite, that that poison stays in the environment and everything else dies around it. Jackal, vultures, lion, leopard, honey badgers, you name it. This jackal is very brave. What are you doing? Now that's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is that vultures' body parts are sold in traditional medicine uh, markets all over Africa and often uh, Amoral and unscrupulous people will will uh, will absolutely poison donkey carcasses or cattle carcasses, kill a bunch of vultures, and then sell their body parts for money. And of course, they've got no medicinal value whatsoever. And, you know, buying a vulture body part is the same as buying a rhino horn for you know its placebo effect. Now we've got more zebra coming in over here, uh, over the rise. If they're not careful, they're going to donate one of their number to these lions again. Lions, even though they are full as full can be, will never pass up an opportunity to hunt again, especially if easy food comes along. And this particular corridor that we're lying in now is littered with carcasses. We've seen about six or seven carcasses, all relatively fresh. And I think what happens is there's a marsh on the other side of this corridor and I think the zebra and the wildebeest skirt the edge skirt between well travel between the two marshes skirting this woodland and I think they get ambushed by uh, by the lions here very clever strategy for these lions